In this video, we're going to be going over fruit response question number four, which says that an ice sculpture melts in such a way that it can be modeled as a cone that maintains a conical shape as it decreases in size. The radius of the base of the cone is given by a twice differentiable function of r, where r of t is measured in centimeters and t is measured in days. Table above gives selected values of r prime of t, the rate of change of the radius over the interval 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 12. So our first problem asks us to approximate our double prime of 8.5 using the average rate of change of r prime over the interval 7 is less than t is less than 10. Show the computations that lead to your answer and indicate units of measure. We are given r prime of t in this table, and we need to find the average rate of change of r prime of t from this interval, and also indicate units of measure. We can just use our average rate of change uh, equation, which says that we can use r prime of b minus r prime of a over b minus a to approximate the average rate of change. So if we plug in 10 for b and 7 for a, we're going to get r prime of 10 minus r prime of 7 over 10 minus 7. And then we just grab r prime of 10 from our uh, data table, so that would be minus 3.8. We grab r prime of 7 also from our data table, so that's minus 4.4. Make sure you're subtracting r prime of 7. This will end up being a plus because the two minuses add up to be a plus, so make sure you're not just subtracting 4.4. And then we're going to do that all over 3. So this is going to be 0.2. And remember that we need to indicate units of measure. So one way that I like to do this that is sort of simple is what are the units up top? Well, we're given that r prime of t is in centimeters per day. So centimeters per day up here. And then we're dividing it over our t, which is in days. So over t. So this is going to be in centimeters per day and then per day again right because we're dividing it by by days again this is our final answer for part a moving on to part b it asks is there a time t between 0 and 3 for which r prime of t is equal to negative 6 and we need to justify our answer i would say yes so if we take a look at our data table we're sort of honing in on this section of our uh, data table and you'll notice that between 0 and 3, r prime of 0 is minus 6.1, and then r prime of 3 is minus 5.0. And so there's a theorem that can help us out with this called the intermediate value theorem, but it's only true for functions that are continuous. So we can kind of pick out some information from our problem to prove to ourselves that this function is actually continuous. So this is a twice differentiable function, which means it's differentiable, which means it has to be continuous. Okay, now that we've established that we can actually use the intermediate value theorem. So because r is twice differentiable, r prime is also different Shiable, so it is continuous as well by the intermediate value theorem. Um, so intermediate value theorem, to break it down, says that if there is some sort of t in between b and a, these bounds, then we also know that if our function is continuous, that value has to be in between the bounds of r prime of b and a as well. Since So now we can use 0 and 3 for a and b. So since 0 t less than or equal to 3 and minus 6.1 is less than 6 is less than negative 5, there has to be some point at which there is a t such that our prime of t is equal to minus 6. So 
what we're saying is that to get from minus 6.1 to minus 5 on a continuous function, there has to be some sort of t such that for r prime of t, it's going to equal minus 6. All right, next problem. Here, we're being asked to do a right Riemann sum with four subintervals to approximate the value of the integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t. I went ahead and graphed the points from the data table. This is most likely what this might look like, but I wouldn't, I'm not going to use this for anything other than just demonstrating what we're doing with this right Riemann sum. So remember that we're breaking up the area under the curve into these rectangles. And when we use a right Riemann sum, what we do is we use the right heights, all right? As opposed to a left Riemann sum, we would start with the left height. So this is what our heights would look like if we had used a left Riemann sum, but we're using the right. Okay, so here is what our rectangles look like that we're gonna be using to approximate the area under the curve. We set it up like this, dt, and then we just use the widths and the heights of those rectangles and we add them all up. So for this first rectangle, it's from going from zero to three. So our width of our rectangle is going to be three. And then our height, we're using that right Riemann sum. So we're gonna be using the value at three, which is minus five. Three times minus 5.0. Then we move on to the next rectangle. Next rectangle is between three and seven. So that's gonna be a width of four, with a four here. And then our height, we're gonna be using the value at seven. So that would be minus 4.4. Moving on to the next rectangle, we're going from seven to 10. So the width of our rectangle is three, three here. Then we're using the height based on the value at 10. So that would be minus 3.8. And then for our last rectangle, our width is from 10 to 12. So that would be a two. And then we're using the height is going to be the value at 12, which is minus 3.5. So if we go ahead and we tabulate that out, that is going to be minus 51. And that is our final answer for this problem. Moving on to the next problem, we have the height of a cone decreases at a rate of two centimeters per day. At time t equals three days, the radius is 100 centimeters and the height is 50 centimeters. Find the rate of change of the volume of the cone with respect to time in cubic centimeters per day at time t equals three days. And then it tells us the volume of a cone, which is good. Cause I mean, honestly, who has memorized that equation? Definitely not me. So the volume V of a cone with radius R and height H is equal to one third pi R squared times the height. This is going to be a related rates problem, and we are going to be finding the derivative of each of these things with respect to time, okay? Once we have the derivative of the volume with respect to time, we can plug in each of these little bits of information they've sprinkled in throughout the problem, okay? So, so we have the equation for V. We want dV of dt, so we're gonna go ahead and use the product rule here to differentiate both r and h with respect to t. So one third times pi, those two stay the same. Then let's differentiate r first. So that would be two r dr dt times h. And then product rule, now we're gonna find the derivative of h. So that would be, we keep everything about, so I'm kind of like just, keeping this and this separate. And then we're gonna get one third pi r squared times the derivative of h with respect to t, which is dh dt. And cool, so now that we've derived it with respect to t, we can go ahead and plug all of the information we've been given. So we get one third pi two times, what, so what's the radius at time t equals three? Well, we're told it's 100 centimeters. So we can go ahead and plug that in for r. What is the rate of change of the radius at time t equals three days? You'll, you might notice that it doesn't actually tell us this within the problem, but that's okay. Remember, we have this whole data table that tells us that. So what we're looking for is this number here. This is dr over dt, so that's minus five. And then what's the height at this time? The height is 50 centimeters. 
times 50. Then we are going to keep moving along. One third pi. What's the radius? Radius was 100, as we said before. And then what is the rate of change of the height with respect to time? <clears throat> so what is the rate of change with the, of the height with respect to time? Well, we're being told that in the problem, it's decreasing at a rate of two centimeters per day. So we're actually going to want to do minus two here instead of just two. And normally I'd tell you to plug this into your calculator, but we don't have calculators for this problem. So you could leave it this way, I think probably, but let's go ahead and just simplify it. So two third pi times, this gives us minus 250, minus 250 times 100 will give us, I just add all these zeros up to determine how many I'm gonna have. And it's gonna give us a negative because we have that negative from the minus 250 plus we have another minus here. So actually it's gonna be a minus two third pi and then do that same do that same trick with the zeros so now we have minus fifty thousand over three pi minus twenty thousand over three pi which we can simplify to minus seventy thousand over three minus seventy thousand pi over three so that should be our final answer um, if you wanted to add units, I'm kind of running out of space, but this would be in cubic centimeters per day, as is defined in the problem here. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.